So in the previous video, I derived that e of x is equal to n times p for a binomial distribution with n independent trials and p the probability of success. In this video, I want to derive the formula for var of x. Now I know that var of x for a discrete probability distribution is e of x squared take away e of x all squared. Now I'm not going to go straight in with the sigma notation for e of x squared. Okay, I'm actually going to use a similar trick uh, to one of my previous um, ways of deriving var of x for another distribution, um, where instead of right working with e of x squared, I'm going to change it up so that it's now e of x squared take away x plus x. Now I know that's not going to change anything because I'm just taking away x and adding x. So, you know, there's no, nothing wrong with doing that. But I know that I can break this apart to write that as e of x squared take away x plus e of x. And then I've still got the e of x squared on the outside. This I can factorise and write like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus my attention on this. Now you might be wondering, well, why would Jack do that? Well, the reason is that I know that I'm going to be working with factorials. And it might be useful if I have r times r minus 1, which I could then simplify a factorial with. So that may well be giving away some of the game here. So I know that the expected value of x times x minus 1 will be the sum from r is 0 to n of r times r minus 1 times the property of x being equal to r. <coughs> OK, so this is the sum from r is 0 to n of r times r minus 1 times by. Now I'm going to write that out, OK? Now I've got the ncr. Now I'm going to go straight in to the factorial notation for that. So that's n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial times by p to the r times 1 minus p to the n minus r. Now I know that um, this starts from r is 0. Okay? Now, if I start at r is 0, the first term is going to be 0 times all of that. So the first term is going to be 0. And when r is 1, so the second term, when r is 1, I'm going to get 0 again. So the first and second terms are both 0. So actually, I could start this summation from 2. So I'm going to go from r is 2 to n. Nothing has changed. OK, this is still the same value. Now here I've got r factorial in the denominator. Now I'm just going to do a little aside down here. Now r factorial, we know, is r times r minus 1 times r minus 2 all the way down to 1. So r factorial is the same thing as r times r minus 1 factorial, as we saw in the previous video. But that's also the same as r times r minus 1 times r minus 2 factorial. OK, so I've got r times r minus 1, and that's going to cancel with the r, r minus 1 that I've got there. So I could write this as the sum from r is 2 to n of n factorial 
over the r, r minus 1 cancels with the terms that are in that factorial there. And I've got r minus 2 factorial, n minus r factorial, p to the r, 1 minus p to the n minus r. Okay. We write that. Now at this stage, what I did um, in the previous video with E of X was I thought about what I wanted and I pulled that out of the sigma notation. Now here, I need some representation of this. I don't know what that's meant to be. So let's start thinking about working backwards, right? This is a bit of cheating, I know, okay, but let's do it in a similar way to how we did it with the previous video. <clears throat> now I know that the answer needs to be n times p times 1 minus p. I know that. That's fine. This is what I don't know. E of x, I know. E of x squared, I know that. Because that's np all squared, or n squared p squared. So this is np take away np squared. Okay? So actually, I could knock those out either side and then add that to the other side. So I'm going to have n squared p squared take away n p squared is equal to my question mark. So if I factorize that, I'm going to get n times p times... Oh, actually, I could do np squared, couldn't I? np squared, and then I could have uh, n take away 1. Right. OK. So really, I want this to be equal to that. So what I'll do is I'm going to factor n, n minus 1, and p squared out of this. And let's see what happens. So from r is 2 to n. Now I want an n and n minus 1. So I'm going to pull them out of the n factorial. So that's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. I've got the r minus 2 factorial and the n minus r factorial in the denominator. Now I want a p squared. So I need p squared to be pulled out of that leaving with p to the r minus 2. And I've got 1 minus p to the n minus r. OK, that's all good. Now, I've got the n, n minus 1, that I can pull out of the summation, and the p squared. So from r is 2 to n, I've got left n minus 2 factorial over r minus 2 factorial, n minus r factorial. I've got the p to the r minus 2 and the 1 minus p to the n minus r. Right. OK. So what I now want to show is that this summation here is 1. So that I've got that times 1. So what I'll do is I'm going to use a substitution uh, to make this look a little bit more obvious to us. So I'm going to let a, last time I let a be r minus 1, this time I'm going to let r, uh, a be r minus 2. And b is going to be n minus 2. So r is going to be equal to a plus 2, n is going to be equal to b plus 2, and n minus r is going to be that, take away that, so b take away a. The 2's cancel. 
So we have n times n minus 1 times p squared times by. Now, r is equal to 2 here. So when r is 2, a will be 0. And here we've got a is n. Sorry, r is n. Now, when r is equal to n, a is going to be equal to n minus 2. But b is equal to n minus 2. So r is equal to n is equivalent to a being equal to b. The n minus 2 is b, so we've got b factorial. I've got a factorial, eh, sorry, b minus a factorial. p to the a, 1 minus p to the b minus a. Now, focus your attention on this, right? That is b choose a times p to the a times 1 minus p to the b minus a. That is essentially this. And I'm adding up all of those uh, terms, all those probabilities from a 0 up to b. So that's adding up the whole binomial distribution. So that's all of a binomial distribution where all the probabilities have to add up to 1. So I know that that is equal to 1. Excellent. So I've now shown that e of x, x minus 1, is equal to that. OK, now, let's get rid of that bit. It never happened. <laughs> right? So, var of x is equal to n times n minus 1 times p squared plus n times p. Take away e of x squared, so n squared p squared. OK, right. Now I'm going to expand this out so I get n squared p squared. Take away n p squared plus n p. Take away n squared p squared. So those terms cancel. I'm left with n times p. Take away n p squared. Factor out the n and the p, and I get np times 1 minus p, which is the required formula for var of x.